so much fucked up shit to get into. Hey everybody, welcome back to Lil Stinkers. My name is John Ocalo here with the ever faithful Jake Matera. Hello. In his new beach attire. Hello. Where'd that far come from? I don't know. But we are back for another episode. We are waiting on our trusty leader, Mike Rainey, to arrive. But until then, me and Jake yeah. will handle the reins of this. This is already like when Garth was alone on Wayne's <laughs> World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like one of our heads are going to explode very soon. Um, you ever seen Scanners? <laughs> <laughs> so you had a good weekend? You went to the beach? I did. I went to the beach. I fucking you went MILF hunting? I went MILF hunting. I got this shirt. I was saying I don't... I, I did not realize how uncomfortable I make women pushing strollers wearing this t-shirt. I don't know why you didn't realize that. Yeah, I, I didn't... I thought everyone would laugh. Like, ha, ah, that's great. <laughs> Instead, I just got pure fear from other women's eyes. Just like, oh my God. Yeah. There's a lot of um, a lot of gay people in that town, and you were probably the most hated one on the boardwalk. <laughs> For sure. For sure. But, you know, we're running a little late, so do you want to hop right into the coin toss? Should we just flip it and... Uh, it would be great if we just don't and we tell them we got Impractical Jokers. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll flip it. Okay. And then... Uh, All right, yeah. And then we'll see what happens. I feel like luck is on your side tonight. I think so, too. Let's see. Let's see here. What we got? Oh, congratulations to Joe Gatto, by the way. Maybe I'll get to talk about it, but him and his lovely wife have gotten back together. Oh, good news. Congratulations. Maybe that means the fearsome foursome will come back together. God can only, mm. you know. Let's just figure this out right now. All right, sure. baby. I want to talk about my freaking sweet jokers. You motherfucker. I lost again. All right. We got murder. All right. Well, I don't know what to do now. Neither do I. I mean, I think... We could just kind of hang out, see if Mike shows up, or we could just kind of, you know, just figure out whatever we're doing. You know, what's <laughs> oh, God. oh no, he's here! Oh, God, no. <laughs> Mike's here! Mike is here! Mike was here from the top rope! <laughs> oh my God! Oh, incredible! <laughs> <laughs> he's getting changed. Why is he getting changed? <laughs> it's my favorite part of wrestling when they do the finishing move and then they get changed just off camera. <laughs> it's Look at those undies. You see that package? Were, they, were those uh, Ninja Turtles on that? Were those pubes coming out of the bottom? Oh my God. <laughs> They're sewn in. <laughs> They're sewn in, he says. Well, welcome to the podcast. Everyone's favorite host of Little Stinkers. Mike Rainey, everybody, he is wow. back. I don't know how I didn't see him over there on the top rope of his uh, of his back room. <laughs> Why does he have a top rope back here? I don't know. I should have known something was up. Jeez, I thought it was a gargoyle. <laughs> Whole time I was sitting here. <laughs> Why are you putting your shoes on? They don't see your feet, do they? Oh my God, he's taking a breath. He has a, a team a physician with him. Yeah. All right, there we go. Hey, boys. Hey, Mike. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? Great. I'm fine. I made it through unscathed. Are you Are you okay? I'm good. Did you think that was going to be worse than it was? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to catch air and land on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that one is about, about as well as I, I think it could have. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Good to see you, good too. To see you. Now, before you, uh, you, I bet you're wondering... <laughs> Why I decided to jump off my top rope tonight. You know, I stopped wondering about that kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but sure, explain anyway. All right. So being that we won the toss already. Hello, everyone at home. Um, tonight's stinker is a professional wrestler. Now it makes sense. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Before we do that, though, I, um, I don't want to start this episode off just by going balls to the wall right into the stinker. Okay. Today's a special day for you, Jake, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's it's, uh, it's, it's my birthday. Happy birthday to my thank sweet you. little Jakey boy. Thank you, guys. Jake. Sweet little Jakey boy. Oh. Happy birthday, buddy. Hey, thank you. How old are you today? 36. Okay. 
It just so happens that I happen to write 36 nice things about you. Oh, my God. And I would like to read them to you before we start. Can I do that? Uh, I'd prefer if you didn't, but if you, yes, go ahead. You didn't know how old he was, but you <laughs> wrote the exact amount of nice things. <laughs> <laughs> my hand got tired of 36. <laughs> you are kind. You are funny. You are wonderful to work with. Man. You're a terrific dad. This is like the help. You is kind, you is smart, you is important. You got a thick ass. I love your views on Israel. You believe in traditional marriage. You underprice the underwear you sell because you want everyone to taste that twang. You eat popsicles without blinking. You think Schindler's List is a comedy. Oh, man. You wear sunglasses to get head. You wear sunglasses to give head. Your undershirt is actually a onesie. <laughs> you cry in the car on the way to work. Oh, man. You pretend to be blind to get into concerts for free. <laughs> it's worked. You insist upon getting sucked from the back. <laughs> with, with sunglasses on. You are so sweet that John and I are at risk for diabetes. Oh, man. You pretended to be stuck in a foam pit just because you were jacking off. <laughs> Finally, the truth comes out. I can't get out. <laughs> Did he say out or off? <laughs> you are the only white dancing Paul Bearer that I know. <laughs> you believe that water parks should be whites only. No, I, I've never said that. You have four big toes. <laughs> you can only come while wearing a slipknot mask. Oh, true. You think the Mr. Softy music should be the national anthem. <laughs> You think Michael Vick should have starred in the remake of 101 Dalmatians. Oh, my God. You hide in trash cans to scare the elderly. You refer to farts as booty burps. Oh. Every Halloween, you throw a pumpkin through your ex-girlfriend's front window. <laughs> you go to Kmart just to walk the aisles and scream slurs. That's, that's not true. They you eat pizza without using your hands. True. When you get Holy Communion, you ask the priest to place the wafer on your asshole. <laughs> Clowns get you hard. When you are in the gym locker room, you grab your ankles and yell fire. <laughs> and block the exit. <laughs> when you hear a slide whistle, you swear it's because a clown is getting hit. <laughs> you walk through gun-free zones with a gun in your mouth. You think tickling is the ultimate act of love. It's your, fun. Your penis bends at a 90-degree angle. <laughs> and finally, you tape your balls to your asshole because it makes you faster. Like we love you, clear. Jake. Thank you, Thank guys. You, Jake. Wow. Thank you. Now everyone knows I tape my balls to my asshole. <laughs> it's your golden birthday. Is it? What when your when your age is the same as your uh, waist size, thirty six. <laughs> <laughs> well, sixty four is just around the corner, guys. <laughs> it's not sixty four. Damn, Jake. Yeah. Thank you. Mike. I can't believe you're growing up. Yeah, it's it's finally. The other day, I, I heard it in my voice. I was like, I, am I a man now? Your balls dropped into your throat? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, there's <laughs> balls in my throat. <laughs> yeah. I'm with a man now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, yeah. Jake. I'm happy for you, man. Thank I you. do have a cake for you when we're done. Oh, God. Have you sat on it already? Is it pre-sat? <laughs> I got to jump off the rope again to give it to you. <laughs> One slice at a time. Yeah. Why is there so Here much comes the airplane. No! <laughs> Why is there so much hair in this cake? <laughs> Tonight's stinker is a gentleman by the name of New Jack. Oh, cool. Jerome Young. He was a little devil, man. I vaguely knew about him. I knew who he was. I could recognize him if you showed him to me on a piece of paper that you pulled out of your pocket. <laughs> Um, Keep it in my wallet. <laughs> and I was aware that he might have killed some people. I was also aware that he pulled some stunts in the ring that a lot of people didn't agree with. And some people viewed as attempted murder. Whoa. Pretty neat stuff, man. Yeah, it's neat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty exciting, man. I'd just say he's going the extra mile. Jake, the main promotion that he wrestled out of was extreme combat wrestling. ECW. Yeah. Yeah, in Philly. Oh, okay. But was he not on um, <clears throat> television? Was ECW on TV? It was on like a public access channel. Like I think it was channel 48 around here, like PGN okay. or something like that. I always that. thought New Jack was like a uh, one of the big WWE guys. There was a, when ECW was purchased, God, I hate that I know this. Uh, they were purchased, like a bunch of them started to like, make their way into the WWF. Gotcha. But a lot of them also started to disappear. 
when that uh -huh. happened. It was like whatever, whichever one stuck stayed, and then the other ones were gone. Uh -huh. Yeah, ECW was popping in like the mid nineties. Extreme Championship Wrestling, my bad, not yeah. combat. But uh, yeah, I remember my boys got super into it. I got out of wrestling in the early nineties, and all my boys stayed in the wrestling. And they would watch it. Dude. And it looked fucking insane, but I was just out of my wrestling phase and I was into my trying to get pussy phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Striking out relentlessly. Try to get pussy when you're rooting for grown men that are shirtless and <laughs> rubbing each other down with oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Truer words have never been spoken. Dude, but. it was intense. I was like a kid when ECW was on. And like my parents would have their friends over to play Uno. So I would just have the TV alone in a room, turn that on, try to watch the scrambled porn for a while. That never worked. Uh, but then just where in your own room? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, just man, ECW would start, and you would hear that dun 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 the white zombie. Dude, oh man, TV in your room is spoiled. Oh, it's such a bummer too because it was so fucking close to us, Jake. Yeah. You know, I I did you ever go? No. Did they film it all at every? It's currently the twenty three hundred arena. Yeah, in South Philly. Yeah, I don't know how often they filmed, but that place is like wrestling mecca. Yeah, it's yeah, I know they deal. do a lot of wrestling, and they do boxing there as well, I think. I've seen a lot of MMA there. Okay. Yeah. And Pretty one time, cool. I saw my MMA there. You saw your mama at? Cheating on my father. What? No. I'm teasing. No. I got in too deep on that joke, man. and I, <laughs> <laughs> That joke should have stayed on the top rope. <laughs> but Should have stayed in the fucking locker room, brother. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, fucking... Um, New Jack was a real motherfucker, and uh, I didn't know there were so many instances that involved uh, knives in the ring. What? And people almost dying in this, for the sake of wrestling. Now, in his defense, it's extreme championship wrestling. Yeah, yeah they were, like, doing real barbed wire and shit, right? Yeah. It was, there, was, there was one match. Um, barbed wire and razor blades. Yeah, he fought. Uh, I'll get more detail into it, but at one point he wrestled a 72-year-old man and beat him with a bat with barbed wire around it to the point where like it spilled out into the audience and like they eventually just stopped it and people were furious with him. He was a black gentleman and you can watch video of this on YouTube. People are like screaming the N word at him because like he's going too far and like these people are losing their fucking minds because I believe this match took place in Tennessee. Whoa. And this was what looked like a white guy. I was actually a Puerto Rican guy. So jokes on them, but they were screaming the N-word at this poor guy who's just putting on a hell of a show, which I, they probably paid five bucks to get into this fucking place, yeah. and they got way much more than they could have bargained for. That's five dollars worth of blood. I know, man. Damn. Dude, but he was, I don't know, I think he's the man. And also, I know a guy who um, who's a friend of mine. I've gone on vacation with him. We're that close. <laughs> <laughs> what? It what means something to me. Uh, we actually shared a bed on vacation, too. Small Airbnb. All right. I think he's three sentences away from telling us about his gay lover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but this fellow, my buddy Mike, he struck up a friendship with New Jack. And uh, I contacted him to say, like, hey, is there anything you could tell me about New Jack that might not be publicly known? He's like, he's like, there's a lot of like shitty stories out there with him, about him. He's like, but I had nothing but good experiences, and I really, I really miss the guy. Is he dead? He is, Jake. Oh man. Yeah, broken heart, like all the other ones. Broken heart, beaten by a barbed wire baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, he was born January third, nineteen sixty three, in North Carolina. Uh, fucked up parents. His dad was an abusive alcoholic. His mother, he describes as a cheater. Uh, he's got an autobiography out, and this is where I got this information from. There's a lot of very f funny stuff in there, which seems very honest. And uh, on a related note to his autobiography, the day he died, people were contacting his wife, asking if they can get an autographed copy of his book because he was selling those on his website. And she said, just in case anybody's going to ask any further, I do not have autographed copies, and if you're going to ask that, you should stick your face in a lawnmower. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Sounds painful. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a uh, rough dad, rough mom. So his mom was cheating on his dad constantly, but the dad was always abusive and drunk. His dad was so abusive that the dad stabbed the mom on one instance five times. And the kids, all the, all the brothers and sisters watched it. There were two older brothers that weren't living with them, but all the other kids saw it with New Jack. Jesus. 
And then there was another time where the dad, I'm sorry, the mom was trying to leave the dad and she was loading the kids into the car. And as she was loading New Jack into the back seat, the dad shot her in the back of the leg. Oh, my God. Yeah. You were thinking about shooting my wife in the back of the leg, Jake. <laughs> no, no, I am not. How about you, John? No, yeah. and I don't want to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, his father, or well, fortunately or unfortunately, the dad was never prosecuted for these crimes because he says in the South, police didn't care about black on black crime. You could essentially do whatever the fuck you wanted and they didn't care. The dad passes away from a heart attack. And at that point, the moms bring in lovers in left and right. And New Jack says that he can hear his mom getting porked at all Jesus. hours of the day. And night. that was he a, a rough childhood. Yeah. Was his dad like a healthy guy or was he like, or like, was he a big guy or was his mom just like put on a screen mask and got him? <laughs> is what I want to know. I don't know much about the dad. I know New okay. Jack was six foot and 240. Okay. So he was a thick dog. Yeah. Um, but I don't know much about the dad. Yeah. New Jack went to 12 schools in 12 years. Damn. I know, man. He's like Billy Madison. Well, you went to a bunch of schools, didn't you? I went to, I, I switched going from middle school to high school. That's uh-huh. it. Yeah. In, insignificant. There goes that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was uh, an outstanding athlete. He took part in track, wrestling, which he didn't take to when he was wrestling in school, mm-hmm. and, but he excelled at football. And he actually got um, looked at by a couple colleges in North Carolina. Um, and it was something he stuck with for a while, but eventually he petered out with that. You guys know anything about petering out? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Around this hour. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to get my Peter out earlier, <laughs> go. but I was at the fucking supermarket again. <laughs> now, he's raising a little hell. You know, any kid, especially senior year, you got senioritis, you're going to raise a little hell. What do you think he gets into midway through his senior year? Puppets. Stealing cars. Oh, shit. Arm robbery. <laughs> Jake was closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me all your money. <laughs> puppet's on your arm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody rules when the puppet gets it. <laughs> Wait, did the puppet just put the gun to his own head? <laughs> <laughs> New Jack's pointing it at himself because he's confused at this point. Come on, miss the please. <laughs> he gets busted for the armed robbery. It's a jewelry store that he and his buddies rob. And the jeweler complies with all of New Jack's demands, yet New Jack still pistol whips him. <laughs> Bad guy. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I don't mean to laugh. He says he doesn't know why he did it. The guy complied with all of his demands, but he still pistol whips him. And by the next weekend, he gets arrested. He's just ready for it the whole time. You know, like you're yeah. ready to pistol whip somebody, and then like you're surprised they do everything. You're like, ah, fuck. You're even more surprised when the puppet does it. <laughs> <laughs> So he ends up getting a uh, something called a zip six, he calls it, which means zero to six years in prison. And uh, this was his senior year. So, all right, let's see, 63, carry your two, 81. All right, so this is summer of 81. Bye. <laughs> We're going to take a half hour Jeff, break. Give me a calculator, yeah, please. Motherfucker carried the two, dude. <laughs> You see what happened to his eyes when he carried the two? <laughs> they went completely black. Whoa, that was scary. It's called shark attack math. <laughs> <laughs> My brain's feeding on numbers. Yeah, Someone took a steel chair to his brain. <laughs> he gets out. Actually, he doesn't get out. He goes to a halfway house in Thanksgiving 1982, Jake. It's a halfway house in Georgia. Okay. So he's a little further from home right now, but he's still in the deep south. He goes to Atlanta Clark College. He's like, I'm going to do something with my life. He goes there. He enrolls in classes. He also becomes a part of the football team. Doesn't really pan out. Eventually, he just drops the fuck out. Football doesn't pan out. Classes don't pan out. He's like, fuck it. I need to work. What kind of career do you think suits him? Car salesman. Road crew, construction crew. Bounty hunting. Oh my god! Whoa. Yeah, yep, that's pretty the one. exciting stuff. Do you guys think you'd be good bounty hunters? No. Do I have all. to apprehend the criminal at the end? If you want to get paid, what if I just track him and then I hire a stronger guy locally to do the apprehension? Are you <laughs> making any money here? 
I am paying out more than I'm getting paid on this. Fuck. <laughs> I'm going to have to rethink this. You're negative $200 <laughs> each bounty. I don't think I'm going to be good at this. All right. Well, you tried. <laughs> New Jack, on the other hand, is very successful. Now, w- during his wrestling career, he says that he has lawfully killed four people while bounty hunting. Later yeah. in life, I watched an interview with him yesterday. You guys ever watch Vlad TV? No. The rap interviewer? He interviewed New Jack like three years ago, and he's like, uh, is it true that you killed four peoples? <clears throat> four peoples? New Jack's like, no. He's like, that's just something that people said about me. Meanwhile, there's video of him saying, I've killed four people. But as a bounty hunter, and he's saying it was lawfully. Initially, he's saying that. Yeah. Later in his life, he's like, yeah, I never killed anybody. Right. But even in his fucking autobiography that's sitting over there, he's like, all right, I killed one. <laughs> Chapter one. <laughs> yes, one. Yeah. yeah, I did that shit. <laughs> yeah. But he says that the only lawful murder only lawful killing that he committed was um, it was with a fugitive who was fighting he and his partner the partner shot him and New Jack stabbed him and the guy fucking died damn why would you why do you need to stab him if he was already shot just like when he pistol whipped the guy he was already ready for it he's just like "Uh, I gotta do it I don't know man you know sometimes like when you're taking a shit you also go a little bit pee pee okay all right. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. I'm, fo- I'm following. <laughs> you don't technically have to do it then, but it's just like, all right, I'm here. Yeah. At yeah. this point, it's just habit, you know? Mm-hmm. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> so he starts bounty hunting in 86. By 91, he's starting to get fed up with bounty hunting, Jake. He's like, all right. He's like, I, I got to make more money. He gets into selling Coke. You guys ever sold Coke? Mm-mm. No. No. Never even bought it. Oh. Never, yeah, never been on the oh. cash end either side. Yeah. What about you? Better off. No. Not no, something just I, just on one side of the sale. Yeah, I never had the um, the uh, the jib. Is that what they call it? The what? The jib. I think jib is short for uh, the ability to have coke and not snort it immediately. <laughs> 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 yeah, I went to rehab for the jib. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, he starts getting into selling coke, and uh, he was pretty creative with it because he would um, he would do it during his during his bounty hunting runs, and oftentimes they would communicate with local law enforcement, say they were coming through specific parts of town, and he says like he would be getting like waved through to areas that were pretty fucked up by police who were just posted up in those areas, and they knew him, and he's just like yeah, I'm going to hunt somebody. Meanwhile, he's going to buy a significant amount of coke. Damn, wow. yeah, pretty slick. So he does that for a while, and he goes to, in 91, he goes to a semi-pro football game in Atlanta. And while he's there, a friend of his introduces him to one of the coaches, who's a guy named Ray Candy, which makes me hungry. Every time I think it in my head, every time the words leave my lips. Makes my teeth hurt. (laughs) Uh, Ray Candy is is a former professional wrestler who now also trains wrestlers in addition to coaching semi-pro football. Jake, uh, he had two names that struck me as funny when in his wrestling days. What do you think they were? Candyman, for sure. Nope. Candy ass. No. Shove it up your candy ass. No. Have you checked up your candy ass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the two names that struck me as funny were Black Stud Williams <laughs> and Super Mario Man. Nice. <laughs> Is that? I can see how he got there. <laughs> Is that like the same time that the video game came out? <clears throat> that rules just mm. taking something from something that just came out <laughs> Superman came out that year yeah. I'm fucking Superman the wrestler his tag team partner was Duck Hunt <laughs> <laughs> but um, he starts training New Jack and New Jack starts doing some uh, some indie promotions around the Atlanta area on the weekends and he's like alright fuck it He's like, I'm getting pretty good at this, so I got to step up my game. So in 19, 1992, he joins a promotion called the U.S. Wrestling Alliance. Okay? Mm-hmm. You with me, Jake? I'm with you. All right. Thank God he didn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from there, he moves up to the North, North Georgia Wrestling Alliance. So these are, be, these are bigger promotions than he initially started out with. And in the North Georgia Wrestling Alliance, he gets a tag team partner, this guy, Mustafa Saeed. Who this guy is fucking terrifying. Probably um, brain damaged. Also is known for smoking pencil shavings. 
That is terrifying. Um, pencil shavings. What does that do? He claimed it fucked you up. Now, there was a time where New Jack talks about it in his... Um, do you have any pencils here? I do. Is it the lead? Do you have a sharpener? I don't know. Right, the lead pencil? So is, it, is he smoking lead? I don't know, buddy. That's crazy. Yeah, what is going on? I got to get to AC more tonight. <laughs> It's back to school Come time. On, I got man. some pencils. Please, I, I, I need a little AC more, man. Just, <laughs> just a little, man. It doesn't even have to be number two. Just yeah, I see y'all got, got a four. Three. You got a four pack right there. I don't even need the eighteen pack. <laughs> Keep the erasers. <laughs> but Mustafa, like, uh, fuck. What is the name of that? Um, Dark Side of the Ring. He like uh, New Jack's got his own Dark Side of the Ring, and in that episode, he talks about Mustafa getting busted by the cops. They're in a they're in a hotel. And somebody from the promotion comes knocking on New Jack's door. He's like, the cops are arresting Mustafa. And he goes out there, and they're trying to fucking wrestling with this fucking guy all because he's been getting high, smoking pencil shavings all morning. <laughs> <laughs> they become a tag team called the Gangsters, Jake. The Gangsters. Yeah. They have a... Um, That's cool. Yeah, pretty neat little shtick. So from the North Georgia Wrestling Alliance, like this, this builds up over time. They they become the gangsters, and then from there they go to a promotion called Smoky Mountain Wrestling. I've heard of that. The guy that runs it is a uh, prominent name in wrestling, a guy named Jim Cornette. Okay. And if you saw him, you'd probably recognize. He him. used to manage Bret Hart. Is that right? Oh, did he? Was I know he, he was guy? involved in WWE for a while. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that's him. Okay. He's a guy that would get in the ring, and like that's a character. Well, yeah, he, he did a lot thing. of different things in wrestling. Okay. So it was like he was a promoter, he was a manager. I don't know if he wrestled. Yeah, he'd be like, my wrestler will beat the shit out of your wrestler. And then he'd like get punched and fall out uh -huh. of the ring. And, he was an uh, announcer. Yeah. How do you know the Smoky Mountain Alliance? Because like, I was deep in the wrestling as a yeah. kid, yeah. And I felt like I would get wrestling magazines and hear about it. Damn. Yeah. Fucking mega nerd. <laughs> 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 I checked out after the Attitude Era. <laughs> Is there anything like Megan's Law? <laughs> yeah, it's a whole other website. It's just Jake. There's a <laughs> lot of red dots on his penis. I'll tell you that. <laughs> one in one interesting thing about the Smoky uh, Mountain Wrestling. I'm sorry, I said that about your penis. It's okay. It, it's it's fine. It doesn't. We can see <laughs> that it's not that way. Is uh, this covers Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, and North Carolina? It's the Appalachians, so right? They're in the South. Yeah. So Mustafa Saeed and New Jack are black dudes. So they're going to be up against some things that the white wrestlers might not be up against when they're down there raising hell. And these are not timid gentlemen either. These are guys that go there just to fuck with people. And, dude, there's a uh, promo that they cut one night uh, where New Jack says, he gives a shout-out to OJ. This is right after the OJ murders. <laughs> like weeks after shout OJ killed OJ. Uh, Nicole and Ron Goldman. Yeah. New Jack's doing a promo, and he says, OJ, keep up the good work, baby. It's two less we got to worry about. Whoa. Oh. New Jack. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus. And then also in the, in the same promo, he says that Louis <laughs> Farrakhan's going to become the next president. <laughs> All right, New Jack. Was, had a, a dumb brain. <laughs> it's what the kids say, on one. Yeah, that motherfucker yeah. was on. <laughs> it was on two, Jake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On three tarted. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't last too long in Smoky Mountain Wrestling because he, he only goes as far as he could possibly go. They only go as far as they could possibly go. They're destined for a bigger promotion. Naturally, ECW becomes aware of them, and uh, the promoter at the time for ECW is Paul Heyman, who's still active in wrestling right now. I've heard that name, yeah. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah, he was just on something. My friend threw a party for the big summer SummerSlam. Res WrestleMania. I think it was SummerSlam a couple weeks ago. Uh, and he came out with some briefcase full of money. Mm. And uh, yeah, I remember him from the 90s. Mm -hmm. So ECW is like basically starting. Do you know what year they started? I Early don't. 90s or late but 80s? I know their heyday was mid 90s. Yeah. I don't know exactly when they started. But yeah, as New Jack's coming up, ECW is also coming yes. up congruently. Yeah. And dude... Any match that I've seen at the fucking ECW arena is fucking insane. Yeah. Like, there might be, I don't know, how many people How many people do you think that place holds, Jake? Oh, God. Probably 2,500 at least, right? You think so? It's a 2,300 club, so 2,300? 
Yeah, I wonder if, or I wonder if it's uh, relative to the address. I wonder or if the they square footage built the. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if they built the capacity according to the address. Somebody, <laughs> somebody, tape my mouth shut. They did that. <laughs> they did that for the movie Three Hundred too, because that's where all the guys were from. They lived in the same apartment building. <laughs> It was a uh, 300 uh, Julius Caesar circle. <laughs> All right. So in don't November, trust, don't trust the army <laughs> in apartment 300. <laughs> I bailed on 300, man. Somebody took me to see it. And you left uh, the theater? Really? Yeah. It was like, I made it like maybe 45 minutes. You didn't even like, see Xerxes, did you? I don't even know what that means. Bro, you, you would know. I thought he was the one that made you, you walk. Were you getting all hot and bothered seeing all those oily Gerard Butlers running around? No, that's why I bailed. Because at the time, I was like, <laughs> you were so like is this a trick? <laughs> <laughs> did you see with a lady? No, I went with uh, Pete Kempel. And he, did he stay in the theater or did he both walk? No, he stayed there. He whipped it out. <laughs> <laughs> His hand was on Mike's leg. But uh, yeah, I did not enjoy 300. Did you go see a different movie? No, I don't even know what I did, man. You probably remember. I might have went to the bathroom for a little while. <laughs> Faked a phone call at the popcorn stand. <laughs> I did not have a phone at the time, but I still faked it. Oh, Jake, you're going to love this, man. Uh-oh. November 96 at the Wonderland Dog Track. <laughs> oh, man. I love when a sentence starts that yeah. way. Isn't there, a, isn't there a sublime song that starts like that? <laughs> um, all right, so there's supposed to be a tag team match, and... Uh, there's a guy named Mesh Transit. His real name's Eric Coolis. He's a big fella. Do you remember um, Big Boss Man? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he he looked like Big Boss Man. Oh, damn. Yeah, okay. that's, that's yeah, Mesh Transit. He looked like me if I worked at, for SEPTA. Yeah, I was going to say, is he wearing like an MTA uniform? Yes. <laughs> that's great. Now, fun fact about him. Damn. He lies and says that he's 21. In actuality, he's 17. Oh, my God. Whoa. Yeah, that comes into play, man, because oh, that's going to no. end up being a big deal. He looks like shit. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I had, yeah. Was he just a uh, subway employee, like a subway station employee? And he was like, well, I don't have to buy a different costume now. <laughs> I thought you meant the sandwich place. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah. hey, I knew, I knew it was going to come off that way. His yeah. hands reeked of turkey. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he was just a kid who loved wrestling, and I'm like, uh, he, I'm a big fatso, and this <laughs> seems like it would fit. Yeah. Barely. Yeah, oh, man. But that's this not is a what I'm going with. Outfit. That, that's rough. Yeah, so he he signs up. He ends up. He and his partner uh, end up fighting. Coleslaw. <laughs> <laughs> they end up wrestling uh, Mustafa and oh, no. uh, fucking New Jack. No, it no. does not go well. So New Jack. Now New Jack says that before the for the match, and I believe that this could be true. Says that Mash Transit came up to him and said uh, he starts talking about offense. He's like, I want you to get me. Want want you to allow me to get some offenses, offense in. Which is a big faux pas in the wrestling world because if you're the new guy, you just got to take your lumps and just fucking deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So New Jack, um, he was offended by that. So he's like, no, we're not doing that shit. So when they get in the ring. They, they won't even let you get one hit is what you're saying. I don't know about one hit, but like you're not going <clears> to <throat> dictate that. If New Jack uh -huh. says like, all right, I'm going to let you get this in at this point. I think that's much more it's acceptable. This is, right. Yeah. yeah. This is all coming from New Jack's perspective, by the way. Right. Where, where you're getting this. Because I feel like this, if you see New Jack and his tag team partner backstage and they're kind of riled up, I think you want might want to, hey guys, can we just like, uh, <laughs> you just yeah. Kinda, yeah. yeah. I, I would typically agree with you, but okay. devil's advocate here. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, uh, devil's advocate, uh, Mass Transit brought his father for the night no. to watch the match, and he also brought two black midgets with him. The reason why he brought these black midgets. The next five minutes will be black midget related. <laughs> oh <my laughs> they <God>. will. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Did he have a and I have a lot of information <laughs> for you. But the reason why he brought the black midgets with him was because he was supposed to wrestle them initially. And that's how he became known to Paul Heyman. His footage was starting to circulate of mass transit. Just going against these two black midgets in a different promotion. And it stood out because, like, he's a massive guy, but he worked with these midgets so well without hurting them. Mm -hmm. It was, it was like, ass. oh, this kid might have some talent. Yeah. So I think Mesh Transit canceled a match to go do this one with, with the gangsters. So the black midgets were like, all right, well, can we at least come to watch this match with these guys? Right. Uh, because if you're in wrestling at this point, yeah. you know, and you see two, two other prominent black wrestlers, 
you know, you want to meet them and it's yeah. like you want to introduce yourself and you want to make a good first impression. And if you're two black midgets, you're probably going to make a very lasting impression, Jake. Just sitting in one chair. Just yeah. I'm, I'm picturing <laughs> one a, ticket, please. <laughs> <laughs> a row of uh, reserved seating and then two tiny chairs at the end. <laughs> so he brings his dad and these two black midgets to the wrestling match. And New Jack says that before the match, they work out that at one point, mass transit is going to become cut. Which I could see happening. Okay. I don't know if all if how much is bullshit and how much is just yeah. New Jack being unhinged or I don't know. But at one point during the match, and you can watch this on YouTube as well, Jake, uh, New Jack takes out a, uh, a blade. It's a scalpel on a uh, fucking stick. A scalpel. A real Jesus. one? Like, it's, dude, a it's true a, medical scalpel. It's a scalpel. It's a fucking scalpel. He takes the scalpel out of like how, wherever it was in his tights. He takes it out. And he's holding Mass Transit's head, and he's, like, sawing it to the point where he cuts two arteries of Mass Transit's forehead. Oh, my God. They, um, a nurse eventually comes into the ring, and she's, like, trying to stop the bleeding because this kid's bleeding all over the fucking place. And uh, at one point, while the nurse is tending to him in the middle of the ring, New Jack jumps on his chest, and he says, let the motherfucker die. And people are, people are, it's clear to people now in the audience that, like, Something really bad's happening right yeah. now. This might have been planned, but it's becoming far worse than it uh, initially seemed. Wow. Um, Don't tell me this guy died in front of his fucking dad. He did was- not. Okay. Now, it seems like he's going to be okay because as he's being carried out of the ring, he gives double middle fingers. <laughs> Who carried him out? The midgets? <laughs> There were 14 well, midgets which carried him out of the ring, Jake. And they were all going, hup, up, 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 <laughs> right? <laughs> Dude, initi- I'm not going to lie. Initially, I thought the black midgets were there for him to jump on New Jack and his partner, <laughs> and then the midgets appear like he shrunk them. <laughs> <laughs> like in Mario. The one midget who ends up uh, telling his side of the story is a uh, prominent midget wrestler named Tiny the Terrible, Jake. Awesome I've seen him. He's also uh, a Republican fundraiser. <laughs> fundraiser? I was about to say. Dukakis, ain't he? He's not involved with the new uh, micro-wrestling. He is. He's I don't think he older is, than no. that. Right? I don't think yeah. he is, yeah. He's an older guy. If he's involved, it, it may be like as a promoter or something Maybe like that. Maybe don't run in tiny numbers or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just single-digit numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get past nine, you got to hand it off to somebody else. <laughs> but, dude, he's such an interesting little man. He was, um, I don't know if he was running for office or he was, like, stumping for somebody else. But one of the one such of the proposals. Such an interesting little man. John, he was, like, trying to. Um, Sounds like a Morrissey song. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he was trying to uh, solidify the dwarf vote for Republicans to the point where he, he told the dwarf community, he's like, look. If you guys can get behind whoever it was that he was promoting locally in fucking Massachusetts, I think is where he's from. He's like, if you guys can get behind so-and-so, he's like, I will ensure that every person in the dwarf community gets a $1,200 a month check. Oh, that's a good deal. Yeah. I'd get behind. But there cannot be enough midgets to make a dent in any county. (laughs) Unless we're talking about Midget County, Kentucky. (laughs) (laughs) That would be a, a painful for him to go canvassing and just like knocking oh, dude, on doors. People are looking through their people. They're like, those damn kids got Black me again. Man. He's just knocking. <laughs> Coming out, assuming it's going to be a bag of shit on fire, stomping him. Eventually, he just crawls through the cat door. <laughs> um, at one point, he becomes the NWA midget champion, Jake. He, he beats another little fella in 1998 named Half Nelson. Is that really his name? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> he was also seen on Jerry Springer. I almost forgot that. It's very sweet, too, because they're in the same... Um, what, what is this called? Out, not Beyond the Mat. What is, it, what is the thing I mentioned earlier? Dark Circle? Dark, dark Side of the Ring, yeah. Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, he's putting in... You're in his bedroom, and he's putting in videotapes for you to watch him do things. And one of the things that he wants people to see is him on Jerry Springer. Very cute. What was his, um, was he a, a paternity test fellow or something? I don't or? Really remember, man. But it was just, 
normal stuff that they're involved Acting in. Acting a damn fool. Yeah. yeah. Throwing yeah. a tiny chair. Yeah, it's like, here's the deal, man. Would they have, um, is that like when they would have Mini Steve come out? A midget version of Steve? <laughs> they did that, <laughs> they right? Did, oh, yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. I'm sure they did. Oh, my God. Why is my baby acting up? <laughs> <laughs> and have Tiny the Terrible come out in a little bonnet. <laughs> but, dude, New Jack was charged with assault and battery for this. For uh, cutting this kid in the ring. Really? Yeah. yeah. He hit an artery, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, so the kid ends up surviving. They go to trial. And New Jack says there's six people on the jury. He says there's five white women and an old black man. And he says the black, old black guy's falling asleep. And he's like, all right, I, got, I just got to convince that guy to stay awake. <laughs> and I can beat this. Now, during the trial... Uh, I just got to keep this guy awake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, old man. <laughs> I just need a packet of Skittles to fucking throw at this <laughs> old fucker. Um, Paul Heyman comes uh, to testify. And uh, Paul, Tayman, Paul Heyman testifies and he says, New Jack, I'm sorry to have to say this in court. He's like, and he tells the um, the prosecutor, he's like, uh, mass transit was using the N word, which is why, and he explicitly says, Paul Heyman explicitly says the N word in court for effect, to to curry favor with the jury. And not only is the old black guy awake now, but even the old white women are shocked mm-hmm. at this point. So he is not convicted of that crime. Was this true? Yes. Or, okay. No, no, not that he did it. That he actually uh, said it. Yes. So mass transit. Oh, no, mass no. transit did not say that. No, was, he didn't say it. Right. Oh, but Paul, okay, okay. It is true that Paul Heyman said that he said Lied it. Lied under oath yeah. about it and yes. said it. Said Damn. it under oath. Oh, my God. Every Southerner's dream. He's a ride or die, man. Everybody needs a Paul Heyman on their side. Yeah, he saw the cash cow <laughs> that mm-hmm. the gangsters were, man. I can't believe he's never gotten in. How do you know that it's fake? Did Paul Heyman admit that he made it up? No, here's, here's how you know it's fake. So... Again, our little friend Tiny the Terrible also testifies. Tiny makes a deal with New Jack to say that he would corroborate Paul Heyman's claims that he said it. Tiny's like, look, I will corroborate it Corroborate it mm-hmm. if you can somehow get me an opportunity in the WWE. New Jack says he can, and oh, he does. No. Oh, wow. Like, Tiny the Terrible does make the WWE. And then he admitted it later? Yeah, Tiny the Terrible says this on Dark Side of the Ring. He revealed it. Yeah, he, okay. he says like wow. what the he, deal was. He all the admitted way that he lied under oath. Yep. And then is there like a a length of time that that does not like a statute? Yeah. yeah, that you can't get a. I don't know. That's crazy. I mean, I don't know when when New Jack's Dark Side of the Ring came out, but I mean, he is the centerpiece of it. So clearly alive, like while this is being produced. Wow. Well, uh, was that like a YouTube thing or was it on TV? Dark Side might of be the Vice. Ring? Okay. Yeah. It's a really good Chris Benoit one too. There's also a uh, very cool like Benoit note to this whole story too. Oh, they um, they've been yeah. directed at some point, right? They have, and yeah. uh, New Jack actually became friends with Chris Benoit's wife Nancy, who he ends up killing. Damn. Yeah, they were they were legitimate friends. Wow. But dude, so fucking uh, New Jack. Oh, back to uh, to Tiny the Terrible Man. He get, he makes the WWE, and at one point he's a part of like a midget tag team called the Twin Towers. No and, way. Yeah, and at one point, Stephanie McMahon says that she's going to have him wrestle The Rock. Which doesn't happen. That's huge. But she does arrange for him to wrestle the pebble. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it again, folks. <laughs> wow. One interesting thing about New Jack during this time is he starts doing cocaine before matches. Okay. So this fucker is revved up. It's kind of shocking he already wasn't. Yeah. He yeah. could have been. Like, I don't know yeah. exactly when it started. And with New Jack, you get a kind of a big fish feel. Like, there's some truth in everything. Like, you do believe that he's doing coke, but mm-hmm. I don't doubt that it didn't start er- much earlier mm-hmm. on. There's a, uh, is it him that's in that famous promotion where he's uh, talking about wrestling Hulk Hogan? And Tell me let, more. He lets a word slip. He's talking to Mean Gene, I think. No, uh, fuck, who is that? I know who you're talking about. Use the N-word. Might be Booker T. It's Booker T, okay. yeah. And he immediately, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. He reacted the way as if Mean Gene said it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they called him Mean Gene for a reason. <laughs> but I watched, you know LeVar Ball? Yeah. 
He and his he sons. Dad? Yeah. yeah. He and his sons were on WWE for some shit. And one of the sons, you could overhear him say the N word. And he got a lot of heat for that. So WWE must really have a strict N word pos- policy, Jake. I, th- I sure hope so. I think yeah. it's more of the fine that they incur if it uh, mm-hmm. flies on live TV. You don't think it's a Vince McMahon thing? I think if it was up to Vince McMahon, it would be every other word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 2000, here's another match that ends up getting uh, fucking New Jack Jack in some trouble. This is, it leads to some trouble for New Jack. Like, New Jack gets seriously hurt in this match in the year 2000 against a a guy named Vic Grimes. Okay. So the first match, so you saw the way I jumped off that top rope. Oh, yeah. Nothing, no hesitation, no nothing. It was go time. I went for it. I did it. And uh, that was it. Fearless. You know, that was, that's the show, baby. Vic Grimes, however, um, he's hesitant. Like, New Jack is supposed to throw him off a 15-foot scaffold. And while they're up there, Vic Grimes is hesitant. He's getting a little bit of uh, fear of heights while he's up there. Yeah. And because he's hesitant, it fucks up the whole, the whole I don't know of what course. they call it, wrestling, the bit or whatever. Yeah, the, like the mm-hmm. timing. Of, yeah. Like, yeah, it ruins your, that, that fucks with the safety of the, the it does. situation. Yeah. So much so that when they land, Vic Grimes ends up landing on New Jack's head, and he breaks it, fractures his skull. Jesus. He fractures his skull and he breaks his leg. But the skull fracture leads to him becoming blind in his right eye. And then also, uh, he's got brain fluid leaking out of his nose. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's fucked, man. Brain fluid. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever heard that before. In 2002. (laughs) Something's wrong with his medulla oblum. In 2002, there's a rematch. New Jack says that during this previous two years, Vic Grimes didn't contact him once to see how the fuck he's doing. So Wow. Which goes would go a long way with a guy like New Jack. New Jack probably would have fucked him up, but not to the point where he does in this match. In Did two- he um was he like uh, out of the ring for two years and then the rematch was the next thing or did he get back into it? They left him in the ring for two years, John. <laughs> the ref's just counting. <laughs> one <laughs> thousand. <laughs> one thousand one. Tiny the Terrible took it to nine. Then the full size ref took over <laughs> to count all the way up to two years. Wow, man. look at that. Look at the scaffolding. Isn't that crazy? Jesus. That's a, dude, it's a 40 foot scaffold. God, look, look at the ring is all the way at the bottom. That's what they fell from. That's insane. Dude, it's so cool to watch because you can see the tension building as they're both going up uh, opposing sides. Now, before the match, Vic Grimes doesn't know this. New Jack goes to a pawn shop and he gets a taser. And uh, when they get up there, they start wrestling and you see New Jack taser him and he has no idea it's coming. (laughs) (laughs) That's uh, honestly a very funny prank. (laughs) He is a funny guy, man. (laughs) I love that. Dude, you know he took that fucking receipt to his tax guy at the end of the year. <laughs> and you write off his taser. Dude, and as soon as he tases him, he fucking launches him off the scaffolding. And as he's retelling this in Dark Side of the Ring, uh, he says, bombs away. And the guy falls 40 feet. Somehow, the only injury, the only major injury that this guy sustains is a dislocated ankle. This is from the rematch? Yes. They did the exact wow. same fucking thing again, but higher. Jesus so Christ. The initial match... Do I you know how long it took New Jack to get healed up after his brain got fucking smashed? I don't, and I doubt he was even fully healed by the time he went back That's to the ring. That's what I'm saying, like, yeah. They yeah. just... They're so poorly paid Yeah, that he probably just needed money and was just like, fuck it, I... I have to go back and kill this guy. I guarantee all of his medical bills were not covered by... No doubt, man. Yeah. And on top of this, too, he explicitly says, he's like, my intent was to kill this fucking guy. And Jesus when you watch the video of it, I'm going to show you when we're done. I'm going to show you some videos. <laughs> I got a couple of videos lined up for oh, the two man. of you. Was that a harpoon up there? He's like, yeah, you didn't expect this, did you? <laughs> Dude, it's so fucking scary because this guy's going to be killed. You see, the way he lands on the fucking ropes, which is a scary thing to see, and uh, he hits the ground, and you think he's much more seriously injured than he is, but somehow only a dislocated ankle, ankle Jake. Oh, my Damn. God. Thank God. The next incident that New Jack has is in 2003. It's uh, for a promotion called Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, which sounds like the facade of a business in China. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's wrestling a 72 year old man named Gypsy Joe. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my. What's his name? God. Gypsy Joe. Gyp- oh, Why man. are there so many 72 year old men in singlets? Uh, they don't have. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he does. <laughs> now, one thing about Gypsy Joe is he's a tough little bugger. Yeah. He's he got to sa- be. He says, I'm impervious to pain. <laughs> Pervious to pain. He's unbreakable. <laughs> also, I don't have a pension. Dude, during this match, <laughs> during this match, uh, fucking New Jack hits him with a bat with barbed wire, and then another item that New Jack smashes over his head is a framed picture of his own aunt. Of New Jack's New aunt? Jack's aunt, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the only way that would be funnier if it was fucking Sloppy Joe's aunt. <laughs> Wait, is that his name? <laughs> no, but... <laughs> what is it? Gypsy Joe. Gypsy Joe. <laughs> Sloppy Joe would have been way better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> look at that little man's tits. Look at his tits. Look at his funny little belly. Yeah, he really loves wrestling. Look at him. Yes, he does. But this is a this is a match where the referee has to stop, and people are going bananas in the fucking audience because of how badly he beat up this old man. The old man's bleeding all over the place. People are screaming the N-word at New Jack. This is in 2003. Yes. And you said it was where? This, fuck, uh, this is uh, Columbia, Tennessee. Okay, so this is, is this, I feel like he dipped down in professional level. Yeah, he took, he took himself out of ECW. Okay. And then, I wonder if it had to do with his injuries. Yeah, He's, less of the fucking extreme yeah. falling off high shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think by that time, WWF had already... Bought ECW and kind of like oh, went did through it? everyone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's just like beating five foot, 70 year old men with baseball bats. He's like, yeah, I can handle this. Yeah. yeah there's so many different uh, wrestling promotions that it's hard to keep track of. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, it does seem like, like somebody like once WWE comes along, they just absorb the others. Yep. Now, would that match have been um, like broadcast on local TV in Tennessee? No, that's actually somebody was just filming with a camcorder. That was not for television. That was no, just fuck. for people to come and watch. Dude, I wish I, I wish I remember the name of this fucking place where it took place, where it was, where the match happened, um, because it was something that just seemed like a place that would only host fucking shitty wrestling. Mm-hmm. And bingo, possibly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But people are furious, and you hear them screaming the n word at this. One funny thing about New Jack and uh, his old tag team partner, Mustafa, that I left out was that um, as as angry as white people got against them, they wanted to piss off everybody. So it got to the point where fucking the gangsters were explicitly like calling out black people. Like they called um, the NAACP. Do you want to- <coughs> Do you want to hear the words that New Jack called the NAACP? Not from your mouth, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> we can read it afterwards. All right, well, I, I'm, I'm going to use quotations. It yourself. All right. I don't think quotations are going to help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Whoa. Yeah, that can't be said. That's out of New Jack's mouth. That can't be said on the podcast. And then also, one of the very funny things that New Jack and Mustafa would do during matches, they would eat fried chicken and watermelon in the ring. Damn. Delicious. <laughs> yeah, that is a good combo. Damn, what time does KFC close? <laughs> now, um, throughout his career, like when New Jack's really getting into Coke, he says he goes through um, a fucking ounce of Coke a weekend. For himself or he's sharing? For himself. That's... It's so like you can't live through that, right? Isn't that insane? Eventually, it destroys his heart. Okay. So he survives it as it's happening, but it weakens his heart to the point where it's it's eventually what kills him. Okay. Well, he, he gives he, up cocaine, but his heart is weakened to the point where he's he just can't survive very too long. too late to... Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> hey, don't say that, man. Sorry. Sorry. I've got a big heart. It's right here. Oh, you <laughs> do, <man. laughs> Now, in 2004, New Jack, he wrestles a fellow by the name of Hunter Red in Jacksonville, Florida, which sounds like something I would have killed to have seen. <laughs> he's wrestling Hunter Red, and uh, in his pocket, he's got a Wolverine claw. <laughs> of course he does. So during the match... I've New- got one in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> New Jack whips out his Wolverine claw, and he stabs Hunter Red nine times with it. Jesus. 
again, uh, he's arrested and he's charged with like this fucking assault and battery. Yeah. So this is this this kind of shit is not talked about before the match. Hunter Red did not know he was going to get stabbed with the Wolverine claw, right? This is what I don't know. So I don't know. If New Jack is being truthful when he says that they talked this over and they just didn't understand how severe it was going to be. Or yeah, he was like, oh, yeah, of course, Wolverine claw. Yeah, a good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I'll see you out there, buddy. Yeah. Or if New Jack's just fucking making it up on the fly. Yeah, it feels like more like he's getting some anger out mm-hmm. that he didn't really run by anybody else. And also, at this point, he's been through ECW. He's probably visited the WWF. Like, he's supposed to be a professional. He's just going in there to just injure people at this point. But here's the deal. He's also putting on a show that nobody will ever forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I think is a big part of, like... Especially the Wolverine. The yeah. Yeah. Just so, bleeding on the side of the road. <laughs> and also, nobody... Just missing a claw. <laughs> I mean, nobody dies, although I think in a couple cases, it was just luck that nobody died. What kind of shot do you get when you get stabbed with a Wolverine claw? I don't think tetanus covers that. I oh, no wow. Idea. Like, there's got to be a different procedure for when you get stabbed with a wild animal's yeah. natural weapon. That's the one you just pee on. What do you mean? I just had a just like uh, jellyfish sting. Yeah. yeah. Well, the- I do have to piss if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. I know, like, uh, one of the... Uh, <laughs> just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> Oh my god, it stinks. <laughs> if if you get stabbed with a dirty Wolverine claw, you could come down with X Meningitis. <laughs> Jake. He had shark eyes for a minute while he was coming up with that. Man. I saw Mike mutate when he was telling him. <laughs> But he stabs Hunter Red nine times with this fucking Wolverine claw. He gets arrested. Nine times is yeah. crazy. Like what was Hunter Red doing? Was he taking it and going with it? Or was he like Help, he's stabbing yeah, I'm me. I'm sure he's screaming, but in the video, the ref is just like watching this. And, yeah. I, and I think this is a case, yeah. I think this is a case <laughs> the where- The ref is like, <laughs> that guy? No fucking way, it's a Wolverine claw. <laughs> yeah. Now, people are yelling from the audience, but again, it's fucking wrestling. People are con- constantly yelling at the wrestlers. They're yelling at the ref. Stop the match, and the ref's just fucking slacked, y'all, just <laughs> covered in blood. And I'm sorry, I should have asked this earlier. I m- immediately assumed it was the animal's- Claw. It was not X Men claws like the character Wolverine. He didn't have that fucking long I, knife I, on his I, No, hand, I think right? it could have been a replica of that because at at that time that would have made sense. Were you picturing that? You know, I don't know. I don't know what I was picturing to be honest. I think I was picturing a porcupine. <laughs> Let's be honest. All right, we need to do animals for Jake after this. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna play animals after this episode. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you think it was the Hugh Jackman? I, I, yeah, I think it was one of those deals. replica claw. Now I say that because, uh, um, Jesus my, Christ, he went berserker style on him. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Where, yeah. Oh my God, that's fucking nuts. Nine times, maybe three. You know. <laughs> Did three in, and then you made your point. Yeah, with, with that fucking thing, he stabbed him nine times in the back and neck. And you said he's six foot, 240 pounds. Yeah, he's a big gentleman. Stabbing Jake. you nine times. In the back? While Jesus he's locked Christ. up, Hunter Red goes to jail, and he's like, all right, what do you think about this, New Jack? I'll drop the charges if you agree to make this a running bit on the road with me, where it's like Hunter Red's getting his revenge against New Jack. And New Jack's like, all right, drop the charges first, and to we'll make it a jail time. Yeah. yeah. So Hunter Red drops the charges. Fucking New Jack takes off. He never sees Hunter Red again. Damn. Wow. Was uh, he suing him for like money or just to put him in jail? Like, was it uh, that was just charge related? Right. Yeah. So <clears throat> the only thing big or Hunter Red stood to see was. New Jack do jail time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like it was a, a civil. It was more yeah, criminal. Yeah, it wasn't going to get his hospital yeah. bills paid for or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know if it's like a code of honor thing where wrestlers don't sue one another over shit. Seems, Seems like, like it, it would, would be. be. Yeah. 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 Jinx. Yeah. <laughs> Touch my penis. <laughs> Dear Lord. Oh, my God, it's happening. Jake, hand me that penis toucher extender over there. <laughs> it's just Jake's hand. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Honestly, I don't think there's an extender big enough for you, Mike. To... 
<laughs> the reach out thing. Because of the because the size of my penis is so small. Is so, what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> New Jack continues to wrestle. Um, he retires, and then in two thousand well two thousand thirteen, he has a retirement match against a guy named Necro Butcher. And during this match, he stabs Necro Butcher with a fork. <laughs> What check they're his like, pockets? They're like no yeah. knives, yeah. no knives. Do you promise? Out. Yeah, they got a knife sniffing dog coming to the ring to check him out. <laughs> Motherfucker can't smell forks. Yeah. <laughs> the same stainless steel. Dude, a fork is just a mini Wolverine claw. <laughs> a broke ass Wolverine yeah. claw. <laughs> it was a Wolverine claw that belonged to one of those black midgets that we were talking about. He wrestles again in 2016, but, you know. Right, he wrestled way longer than I thought. Yeah, I... I thought see, he was going to be dead before 2010. It seems like the glory days were over by the time 2000 hit. Yeah. And then after that, he was just putzing around stabbing people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't yeah. know what glory days mean, but uh, I think stabbing glory might days. be some Actually, of the glory yeah. days. Yeah, I think he'd argue that that was the glory <laughs> days. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, May 14th, 2021... New Jack dies of a broken heart. Oh, that no. was really recent. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, man. There were some other funny things about him. Um, one of his props that he liked to use in the ring was a staple gun. Yeah. And it might have been while he was out injured due to his incident with uh, fucking Vic Grimes, where he took up uh, a buddy had a carpeting business, so he was helping him. And he says he's installing carpets using the staple gun. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I got an idea. <laughs> that seems like that's classic fun. ECW fun, yeah. though. Yeah. Well, that's like um, man, Mick Foley, Mankind. Mm-hmm. He was Cactus Jack mm-hmm. and Dude Love in ECW. Mm-hmm. And that was like one of his... Cactus Jack and Terry Funk would have all these like hardcore matches and they're always stapling shit to each other's heads. <laughs> that's what I was about to say. He was uh, probably the breakout star that brought ECW to the radar of... WWF, uh-huh. you know? Who's Mick, that, Jake? Uh, Mick, Mick Foley. Foley. Yeah. Because, like, Mankind, I think, went to the WWF, what, 95, 96? To I be don't like, know. And then, like, him and Undertaker, the Buried Alive matches, Hell in a Cell, like, all that stuff was, like, huge. Probably the one of, like, the biggest matches of our generation. So, like, that had to have opened the door to bring everyone to WWF. Let's see the life go out of John's eye talking wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm interested, Jake. <laughs> Yeah, this is, um, I mean, as funny as it is to talk about, like, the criminal shit that's going on. Yeah. Um, there is a ton of, like, a ton of the wrestling stuff yeah. makes me wish that I was very into wrestling during this time. I think 96, I was, was, that was, like, the year or two that I was watching it. Yeah. Raw, I guess, was on every yep. week. Yeah. Or was there a Sunday night thing, too? There was Sunday night heat, Monday night raw. Jake was watching it with a condom on. Yeah. <laughs> they had a Saturday night live type of show with or Saturday morning live with Sonny. She was pretty mm. hot. And we do like a call in show. Mm. That was pretty awesome. Jake, do you remember a lady named Terry Runnels? Why that sounds familiar. Her name was uh Marlena yes, Gold yeah, Dust Wife. Oh yeah. New Jack had a relationship with her. New Jack was getting a little bit of trouble because he was showing her nudes all over the place. Dude. And uh they're like New Jack, uh, you can't do this. He's like New what Jack. the pictures belong to me. Why can't I do this? <laughs> Oh my it's God. a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. During the interview that I mentioned earlier with that guy, Vlad TV, they bring this up about how Terry Runnels was furious that he's doing this shit, justifiably so. Yeah. Um, was it like already cell phone era, or did he have like a fucking uh, digital camera that he was photo. carrying? Around? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Is he yeah. coming from the fucking photo mat with a autograph and on my shoes? But Vlad TV, they asked him about it on there. And uh, he answers in a roundabout way, but then for some reason, in regards to Terry Runnels, he says she was a good ass licker. Jesus, man, that is dude. She was like information one of the first. you don't want to come out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or maybe you do. She was one of the first like pinups in like those wrestling. Beautiful man, I would have up on the wall. That and a free Britney Spears poster I got from Seven Eleven. <laughs> man, you love shit like that. Oh, a man. free Britney Spears before she even needed to be free. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, John, you're quite the philosopher. Thank you. I was a philosopher minor. <laughs> what? I just needed three more credits to be a double major. 
Maybe I'm not smart. <laughs> Fuck. That's so crazy, dude. Uh, a couple of the funny things that are popping into my brain. He mentioned uh, lo- loving doing coke, and he says he fantasized about the end of his life involving him sitting in a wheelchair doing coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, he died too young. I know. Now, I f- now I feel bad. <laughs> dude, this was pretty interesting, too. There's a video. All right, so it's fucking... Um, it's New Jack. It's Honky Tonk Man. I forget who the third guy in the video is, but they're discussing Chris Benoit murders. Whoa. And uh, right after the murders. This like, is the lady you had on your wall? Oh, yeah. She's so beautiful, man. I don't know about that. She, she's she got old, you know? She got old. Well, yeah. Type in Marlena in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Type in Jake's bedroom 1996. <laughs> <laughs> It'll show up. You know those perverts in the chat rooms I was talking to? <laughs> you were chatting in 96? Oh, buddy. Ooh, that was the time. I baby. skate street Lucky for you. life was active. For you sure. were a street skater? Oh, buddy. For yeah, for a minute. Yeah. Have you ever gotten your back wheels off the ground? That's Sable. There she is. There's with gold dust. It was a straight skater. <laughs> yeah, what a beauty, man. But she had these like these issues of the swimsuit edition of the WWF magazine that mm. came out. The center I mean were, were you uh were you trying to get to the mailbox first that day? Because <laughs> <laughs> Your parents would be mad if a nine-year-old boy was getting a, the equivalent you of Sports what? Illustrated swimsuit. Weirdly, I got the magazine at the same 7-Eleven that I got the free Britney Spears poster. <laughs> right next to the Chai High School. You yeah. did not have a, so, uh, yeah. Pres- yeah. a subscription. You had a prescription. <laughs> <laughs> For more Marlena. <laughs> but in this video where fucking New Jack's talking about the Chris Benoit murders, he starts freaking out. Because WWE, they did like a, uh, like people started speaking out and like talking about like what a great guy Chris Ben was. Didn't they even do a tribute the to him next, right yeah, after? They, the next night after the murder, because it was unclear what happened. They just like, they, they just they knew the whole the Bo, family died. The Bowflex might have malfunctioned. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's, let's, let's wait and, yeah. and see. And yeah, they had a whole tribute show. Like they dedicated the whole episode of Raw to it. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. That's probably wiped from the internet. Oh yeah, it's been, it's been, it's disappeared. But all these people came out talking about what a good guy John Cena was and how maybe steroids made him do it or CT. Not made John him do Cena. It. Not John Cena. John Cena was one of them that came out. I'm sorry. Yeah, the yeah. Chris Benoit. Oh. But John Cena was one of the guys who talked fondly about Chris Benoit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because he he had just broke in the WWE. He was trying to get that contract. Give him time. I yeah. mean, you leave yeah. Cena around these kids long enough. He'll do something fucked up. But, dude, in the video with New Jack. <laughs> one of the nicest guys out there. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, John. Those are the ones you got to watch out for. But, dude, in this video with New Jack... <laughs> it's true. He's not lying. In this video with New Jack, <gasps> he's fucking losing his mind, and he's right on about all this shit. Mm-hmm. He's talking about how fucked up it is. He's like, I don't give a fuck how good of a person, how good of an experience you had with a person. Yeah. The guy killed his wife and his fucking kid. <laughs> Neither one of them deserved to die. And New Jack, I mentioned he was friends with Nancy Benoit. He said there were many times where, like, they would be all be on the road together, and they would all hang out in the lounge and drink together. And he said oftentimes Nancy would ask him to walk her back to her room. Um, and I wonder if that's because Chris Benoit was doing fucked up shit back then. Yeah, was oh. he like elsewhere? I don't know. Well, if she's getting, there, he's there. That feels like right. A but weird like, was thing. he in a room doing coke, doing drugs? I don't know. Getting, that's, getting some strange. Yeah. I don't know, man. That is a weird thing to have another man walk your wife back to the room. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah, like I would that. assume yeah. he's like too fucked up to walk or something. I don't like. Know, man. I, here's, God, I here's hope, my initial thought. Oh, Chris didn't reference that. Was that maybe Benoit was abusive. Okay. I mean, clearly he was ultimately abusive. <laughs> um, but before that, you know, maybe he was physically abusive towards yeah. her. And maybe she knew that, like, when she came to the door, he would start freaking out. And then she would actually have a chance now if New Jack was there. Gotcha. Okay. To, to ward off the assault. Because mm-hmm. otherwise... You know, you're fighting a fucking 250-pound wrestler by yourself yeah. who's just mad for no reason. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to defend Chris Benoit in this instance, but well, it I is... heard you before. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is kind of, like, for no reason, it is kind of alarming when your wife is downstairs at a hotel bar with seven other professional wrestler, yeah. wrestlers doing tequila shots <laughs> yeah. while you're in your room doing whatever the hell you're doing. And this is Jake Benoit's corner. No, no. This is, <laughs> I'm not... I, yeah. One very funny aspect of the New Jack video where he's freaking out about this is that 
he's just about everything he's saying is making sense. And uh, he's talking about how fucked up Chris Benoit was for doing this to his family. These are very profound words. However, he's wearing an O.J. Simpson jersey while he's saying all of this. (laughs) (laughs) That's beautiful. So take that for what it's worth. Yeah. (laughs) Kind of, you know, lessens the integrity. Did you guys ever go to a wrestling event? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like Something a- at the Spectrum in the 90s. Yeah, that's where okay. we used to go. Yeah. It was what would, incredible. What WWF. would that have been? WWF. Yeah, at the Spectrum. Would it have been a, a televised event, or was it just like a touring? Some what, what they used to do is, so they would, um, they would record them on Saturday nights, and then Sunday morning, the event would play on Prism. The local oh, cable okay. station. Because it was like all the dudes, you know, fucking Undertaker, Sting. Mm-hmm. Yokozuna, yeah. yeah, was that his name? Yep, yeah, it was. Um, one. Was definitely all the stars of the time, but I don't. It seemed like well, it, it wasn't WrestleMania, was it? I feel like it was not a, at that time. All right, so how old are you? Thirty six, thirty seven. All right, I'm forty four, and it didn't seem like it was a packed stadium, which makes me think it wouldn't have been WrestleMania, right? Yeah, they had untelevised events a okay. lot because I went to one that was untelevised. When I would go, um, I'm fucking forty four, so. When I would go, I think it would be broadcast live on Prism on Saturday nights as, the, as they were filming it, and then Sunday morning would be the replay. But this was before um, it became, I, wrestling just became massive in the 90s. Like yeah. As big as it was in the mm-hmm. 80s, going into the 90s, it just became this out-of-control thing where they started having it multiple nights a week. Yeah. It's so strange that, like, <coughs> it was... Uh, like two sides of of wrestling back then was like people who didn't care about it because it was fake. Yeah, I feel like it, there wasn't the amount of people that there are today that loved it, knowing that it was all written in a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. that wasn't as common as of knowledge, I guess, yeah. back then. Yeah, it was like yes, like yes, it's real. No, it's fake. That right. was it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so weird. Now people just love the show. Yeah, but didn't it like? I feel like now there's been like shows of people like writing for wrestling and like it's known that yeah what was that didn't MTV have one tough enough where they try to train wrestlers yeah it was like yeah making the band for wrestlers yeah, yeah. was the Miz involved in that I think so I think, I think so. he was, he yeah. was like a, a road rules guy or something wasn't yeah, he? yeah. that's how he started okay did you guys ever go to a local wrestling event though like no not, I would love not, that though I did once in in Chai where like I grew up uh-huh. they had um. They had a wrestling event in a in the middle of a softball field. Damn. They rented a rink, and not that many people showed. Like, like I'm talking less than 100 people uh-huh. easily. Like, probably less than 50. And I remember I was so excited because the two big uh, stars that they brought in for this, uh, like this whatever organization this was, was uh, Rocco Rock from Public Enemy. Oh, but, dude. Yeah. I think um, uh, the Public Enemy ended up... Uh, they they ended up had at least one match against uh, the gangsters. Oh, definitely, for, yeah, for sure. That guy was like pretty cool. So he was like the feature attraction. Then they had something. If you remember, like the NWO was huge. Well, ECW had their own spinoff called the uh, RWO. It was like the Real World Order. Okay. It was Al Al Snow who had a he carried around a, a head just like that, but it was a female head. And I was like, "What does everybody want? Hood." What does everybody need? <laughs> I know you were yelling that shit. Oh, man, I was screaming. <laughs> and this one guy in the group was uh, Stevie Richards. I think I've told you this story before, but, like, his big finishing move was uh, Super Kick. It's just like a switch in music kind of thing. So he's there. They're all getting dressed in a gazebo with no, like, a picnic gazebo with no curtains. Mm-hmm. Just, like, dropping. And skivvies. Yeah, and they're driving. They Like, you see their personal vehicles show up and park, and it's, like, the most beat-up uh-huh. Honda from, like, 1980. It's like straight out of the wrestler. It's I was so about to sad. say, it's what I'm picturing. And I'm freaking out because they're all there. I'm like, oh my God. And so like I'm standing. <laughs> oh my God, is that a 1995 Toyota Corolla? <laughs> <laughs> is that a Dodge Shadow? <laughs> and uh, like I remember the wrestlers are leaving. They're miserable because they probably didn't make shit. It was yeah. probably based off ticket sales. Nobody's there. And I'm there with my friends with a backwards hat going, Stevie! Stevie, super kick me, Stevie! Stevie! Super kick me! And kick, finally, he like just snaps. Like, hey, kid, stop being an asshole. 
From the ring? No, no. Oh. He was leaving. Like, I was just like waiting to get an autograph on the poster and all this kind Did of stuff. Did you really want him to kick you, or were you just trying to get his attention? I was just trying to get his attention. Yeah. Oh, just like this T-shirt. <laughs> Stay me! <laughs> <laughs> Super kick me, see? Jesus so, Christ. Yeah. So, yeah. It's sad, man. The it's a tough local, life, man. Yeah. The, 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 I remember seeing Beyond the Mat as a kid. Do you guys remember that documentary? Yeah, yeah. I was like, this... I always wanted to be a wrestler growing up, mm -hmm. and that was like the moment I was like, "Oh, this is too sad." New Jack was in that too. Yeah, yeah, he was. There was a uh, one part that really, really struck me as odd. The part with uh, fucking China. Well, uh, what part is that? She's talking about like she's uh she's doing like a uh, home shopping home shopping network presentation. It's like a fake one, and I then think, she yeah. talks about how. Um, like her grandmother or something said she was too feminine. <laughs> what do you want me to say? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that sex tape? I don't remember. Yeah. And that would be the I kind of you thing would. that I usually would remember. Yeah. Yeah, you would remember. We'll do a watch along after the episode. <laughs> <laughs> was that, um, was Jake the Snake in that one too? Or was that yeah. a separate one? Yeah, that was one. And it's like, a lot of that story is him trying to reconnect with his daughter who like okay. doesn't want anything to do with him. Wasn't there a separate Jake the Snake uh, documentary just all about him trying to get his shit together? I think that's The Wrestler. The movie, like the movie The Wrestler, I think is based off yeah. a lot of that. But maybe, yeah. Some, so Diamond Dallas Page is the guy he hooked up with, right? To get his shit straightened out, right? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I know he was a crazy alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Crack like, too. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Even the snake. The snake. Was, <laughs> the snake <laughs> when they found him, he was skinny yeah. as shit. <laughs> Man, you see that tongue on the snake, which is just like. <laughs> what that tongue do? <laughs> the tongue. That tongue tweaking. <laughs> they used to do. I don't. I guess just local stuff at like a Catholic school. Mile and a half down the road from my Catholic school. Yeah. In Delaware, they had him like. I feel like every other month, would that have just been like local guys that like doing Most it, likely, or were they? Yeah. That was just a priest who like wrestling kids. <laughs> yeah, it always threw me off. I can't imagine it was ECW stuff because I can't imagine them like wanting bloody matches yeah. in their. I feel like there's school a lot. gymnasium. Yeah, I, I'm friends with a couple of people who do wrestling, like on Facebook. So I see like them mm -hmm. post about like events they're having in gymnasiums and like yeah, just like it just seems like so hard. Mm. I mean, it's cool if you like it, you know? Yeah. Is it like comedy? Like if somebody is like a Southern wrestler and they're going to be around, you know, the Philly area, do they like get into a group and say like, hey, can I <laughs> yeah. get in a match with somebody? Like, yeah, like a comedy. Have you guys got any events coming up that I probably could wrestle dude. on? Very weird. What do you guys think you would be if you were wrestlers? Would you be a, uh, I think the term baby face or would you be a heel? The opposite of heel is baby face? Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah, baby face is the the good one. I don't know if I could be a heel. You, yeah, you got some evil in you. You think? I, I think, yeah, you, you look devious. Okay. Jake's a definite baby face. You think so? Yeah, I you're so sweet. Although you could make a heel turn at some point. Yeah, that would be good. I could see him posing as a baby face and doing like the backstab fucking. Poof. You both got the thing where it's, you know, it's. Sweet and sour. Yeah. John, I see you as a total backstabber. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess I could do that. <laughs> Seems kind of a natural yeah. fit. What about you? What do you, what do you think? Uh, I would be a heel. Yeah? I like being a bad boy. <laughs> really? You saw me jump around this room. That was it. That was intense. Both sides jump. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just yeah. want to do a... Can I, can I jump off before the end? Do whatever you want, man. This is your room, too, buddy. Oh, dude, there was something else very, very funny about uh, about New Jack. But he had a teal Corvette that he would drive around, and it had a Malcolm X plate on the front. And there was another fucking wrestler, uh, Ricky Morton. He's like, dude, you can't drive that around because if people see you arrive in that, once they know that's your car, and they'll grow to hate you during the match, they'll destroy your fucking Corvette. <laughs> He's like, you got to get a beater to drive around him. So he got a van. And uh, New Jack Put said... Put a big Malcolm X decal on the side <laughs> of it. <laughs> um, New Jack said that once the van's tires on one side were bigger than the other side. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Was that to offset his weight? 
Did he shrink it back down to a level when he got in the <laughs> past the driver's door? It was on the opposite side, yeah. and she made it worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so R.I.P. New Jack, man. That's yeah. a guy that I think I really could have liked. Happy birthday in heaven, New Jack. Happy yeah. Birthday, New Jack. yeah, I hope God's got scaffolding up there for you. That's probably how he got up to heaven. <laughs> That's probably how they sent him to hell. John. They brought him halfway up, up. <laughs> and then they tased him off. No. Yeah, he was Bombs a bad away. man. He's in heaven. <laughs> he's in heaven. Yeah. He did too much Rest bad stuff. No, he did good stuff, too. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'll go to heaven tonight and see. Do you mm-hmm. think it's all based off the... I'll uh, send you there. This is too... Ph- philis- you know, yeah, you were a ph- philosophical minor, almost. <laughs> do you think it's based off the amount of good you do that gets you into heaven, or the amount of like joy you bring to other people? Because oh. if that's the question... He could be a terrible person, but he brought so much joy uh-huh. to everyone through no, wrestling. I don't think it's that. <laughs> I think All it's. Right. You think it's pleasure based, Jake? Yeah, pleasure based heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me hungry for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> we got a pleasure based there in the chicken. <laughs> I yeah, I, 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 got, I got a ham in the oven. I'm gonna go pleasure based it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come in the kitchen for five minutes. <laughs> Every time you squeeze it, it goes. <laughs> Don't come in the kitchen until you hear me tell the ham I love you. <laughs> it was just a baked ham <laughs> until I pleasure basted it. Now it's a honey baked ham. Damn, how to get spiral cut? <laughs> <laughs> it's for me to know and you to never find out. <laughs> Ooh, baby. You guys want to go give the um, the authority some assistance tonight? Head yeah, over to Chester County and help find that fella? Let's do it. So what we're dealing with right now is about, what would you say, maybe 30 miles from here? Yeah. Yeah, maybe less. There's a little tiny murderer on the loose. This guy is five foot tall and 120 pounds. A tiny terror. Danilo Gavalcante, I believe his name is. Sounds Italian, Brazilian, which is, might be influencing is, how hard they're searching for is him. Is he Portuguese, though, I think is his, because he had his mom. That's his native tongue, oh. but he's, uh, he's yeah, of he's Brazil. Brazil. Oh. They love hard, Jake. They do everything hard. <laughs> they, they, do, they do it hard. They escape hard, too. He like, did. He's been gone for like a fucking week. And the, the, he was seen on camera, you know, probably less than five miles from the prison last night. Dude. So he hasn't gone far. No. He's already snuck into people's homes, yep. gathered supplies. Bro, that it's fucking, fucking hot terrifying. as shit out. Where's he drinking water from? Dude, there was... All right, so a guy whose house that he broke in, it was a man, his wife, and I believe there are three children. He's, I think it was last night. He said he woke up and he said to his wife, I think he's in the house. So the guy went to the top of the stairs. He looked into the rooms to make sure the kids were there. The kids were there. He's at the top of the stairs. He hears like a little bit of rattling downstairs. He flicks a light three times, and this fucking escape murderer flicks a light from downstairs up at him. Wow. And then the guy- flipped back at him. Yeah. Damn. This motherfucker's flipping lights back at him in his own house. So the guy- so scary. True light switch Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So the guy rounds up all of his kids, puts them in his bedroom. Sends them downstairs first. <laughs> you guys are hungry, trust me. But he rounds up all Who the was fucking pancakes? kids. <laughs> Daddy hungry. <laughs> rounds all the kids up, sends them into the bedroom with the wife, goes downstairs, and as he's going downstairs, he sees the guy walk through the living room, into the kitchen, and out the side door. But this is so funny, Jesus. too. Jesus. The, the little guy, five foot tall, 120 pounds, he stole peaches and little snap peas. That's a little man smorgasbord. <laughs> Isn't that the origin story of the Full House, too? The prisoner breaking in, murdering Danny Tanner's wife, and then that's how it starts. Got she was him, dude. murdered? Yeah, the pilot episode. Are you a, serious? A prisoner escaped Alcatraz, murdered... Danny Tanner's wife Are you swam to shore. Yeah, so this is all made up. Oh, <laughs> you son of a bitch. You fucking asshole. God, why would you go back and like watch that? it? Yeah, it was, it was initially called Empty House. <laughs> um, were you, I'm sorry to bring up more bad news, but were oh, you guys no. Jimmy Buffett fans? Um, not particularly, but I certainly appreciate his vibe. 
Uh, me too, man. Yeah. Same. People might look at me as a mountain man, but I sure am a beach boy at heart. Oh, that's very sweet of you to say about yourself. <laughs> yeah, he was he was fun. Yeah. Very sweet guy. Damn. Him? Fucked up way to die. What was it? Uh, malnutrition. What do you mean? Living off sponge cake. <laughs> 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 He's not the only one to die this week, too, man. We had three musicians die. Who's the other two? The lead singer from Smash Mouth. Kid and Play. <laughs> Steve Harwell. Oh man. Yeah, he died. I don't know. I, I don't know how. Li- was liver failure? Oh no. Which I imagine he drank himself to death. Yeah. The way to go. The baby. last thing he was known or got. Viral for was him being fucking wasted at yeah. a small performance and like yeah. fucking up his own lyrics and yelling at the crowd. It was that was upsetting. It's a shame you want him to come back from that. And then the other guy was uh, Gary Wright, the guy who wrote uh, Dreamweaver. Oh, oh yeah, oh. saw that today on yeah. the news. A lot I did of not have him uh, third because I've never heard his fucking name in my life. But um, happy birthday in heaven to all three of those famous musicians. The yeah, day there the with music New Jack continued. <laughs> I think I think uh, Jimmy Buffett fans and the people who would go to concerts turned me off to him. You know, it's a very Dave Matthews kind of. So parents. <laughs> no, I feel like there's people I went to high school with that go to like. Really? Yeah, they go to that when it, when he comes to town. They wear their fucking parrot shit, and then when Kenny Chesney comes to town, they put on their same people hats. Yeah, it's the same people. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. God. Which Any I'm all about going shirt. out and drinking, having a good time, but um, don't put it on Facebook, you fat bitch. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> God, <laughs> you know, leave those fat bitches alone. All right, all right, do you? They sit there 364 days out of the year, just staring at that parrot shirt. Oh my closet. God, John, you should take up uh, the space that he leaves behind. Oh there's, man! Uh, there's fat bitches out there not knowing who to fucking listen to tonight. All right, let's we'll I'll put together some songs. Tunes. We're not leaving this house until we come up with a song for all the fat bitches out there. Okay. All right. Uh, what should we sing about? <laughs> um, not knowing how to swim. <sighs> always being on a boat, but stinking up chairs. Very scared. Yeah. Stinking up chairs. Stinking up chairs. Fibromyalgia. Stinking up chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Slinking upstairs. <laughs> Searching for my lost can of Febreze. <laughs> Some people say that my eating's to blame. But I know. I'm fucking starving. <laughs> it's a thyroid condition. <laughs> how have they not found this guy yet? I'm, I'm truly concerned, dude. It's this is, that he's this is probably how the investigation is going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody's making up fake Jimmy Buffett songs in the car. <laughs> Just two guys with fucking AR-15s with FBI fucking shit done. A five foot Brazilian. Yeah, I've seen a million. They're, they're farming mushrooms up and down this road. <sighs> Who knows? Maybe by the time we're done tonight, we'll see that they got him. With the fucking dogs that they have there. Yeah. Like, yeah, what dogs are you using? Seriously, dude. Are you yeah. just like knocking on doors saying, like, hey, can we borrow him? <laughs> dogs yeah. like, <laughs> Chihuahua. Mm-hmm. By I the think- way, yeah, stay w- stick around for our next episode where we have a very special guest. <laughs> <laughs> that would be people. funny if he popped up in the background while we were recording. <laughs> I'm surprised. Did you, know, did you see the guy that uh, whose house it was? Was he an older guy? I or? didn't see, no. Okay. He sounded younger. I mean, his kids were there. Yeah. Unless they were just like older bitch-ass kids who haven't found their footing in life. <laughs> I mean, I'm a new dad. I'll be 50 and my kids are still going to be at the house. So yeah. I, I just picture a guy living out there to be fucking strapped up and have the yeah. gun next to the bed. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of dudes f- fucking wish for that moment, you know? Dude, dude, there's some wild shit that goes on out there. I have an uncle who lives in Chad's Ford, which is right next really to close. Where, yeah, yeah, it's right yeah. where the, all this shit's happening. 
And there was an incident when I was a kid that he spoke about that really made me hesitant to ever go to the house. So one time they were just sitting in the den watching a movie, and they looked up, and uh, there was a guy looking at them through their own window. Jesus. Yeah. Was it... Um, it was uh, Domino's Pete. guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I have a delivery here for uh, Chuck. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a bad guy on a loose. Hope they get him. I know. How do you get loose when you're a murderer? <clears throat> they say he escaped the same way someone else did, like, just a few months ago. Out the, out the same way, yeah. Flushed himself down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are some advantages to being five foot nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Security cameras don't even pick you up. He scaled the roof? God damn, how long did it take him to do that? One very funny <laughs> thing about him being spotted last night it says at like 9.30, he spotted going northbound. 10.30, he spotted going southbound. <laughs> <laughs> they say zigzag, right? Get, away, get him off your trail? Yeah, but he's walking <laughs> up and down the same fucking <laughs> yeah, trail. Yeah. <laughs> the footage that they have of him in the, in the dark last night is a trail, a, a trail in Longwood that I've walked down before. Yeah. Have you been to that part where it's just like a separate big <clears throat> field and there's just a bunch of zigzagging trails? Yeah, yeah, I've been down there. Yeah. I'm just like, it just seems like a, how can you not catch him? Yeah. And like, also, why would, why would you still be so close? Why would he be that close or why would the investigators think why he's would so he, close? Why would he still be that close? You know, I guess yeah. I they had the stuck. perimeter set right, up. Yeah. And I think he knows that in that town, like there are a lot of people that look like him. Yeah. I think if he ventures any further out. All right, if he ventures any further out of Chester County area, right, out of he's going to be more noticeable. Yeah, because right now there's a lot of migrant workers in that area, yeah. and I think he knows. All right, once I get out of here, I really got to have a plan mm-hmm. because otherwise, they're going to find me pretty quickly. I mean, I got heat exhaustion after fucking eight hours of being in the heat the other day. This motherfucker's probably puking up a storm yeah, right now. It was now. a hot day today. I wonder what it's, today's going to do. In terms of the search. And there can't, I mean, there's probably some creeks and stuff that he can, but it can't be like clean water. He's just on an inner tube. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Living on sponge cake. (laughs) (laughs) Cut my own shackles off at the cruise on back home. Hey, that guy served me at Fogo to Shown the other day. Oh. That guy was cutting off pieces of filet from a spear. <laughs> He's going to put it right through your heart. <laughs> um, I made a joke about him last night on Twitter, assuming they were going to catch him today. They haven't caught him yet today, so I hope he's not on Twitter. <laughs> just searching his own name. Mm-hmm. Just get followed by the killer. I, I got to see if they caught him, man, because this is going to drive me insane. I mean, what the fuck, man? What would I do if I fucking woke up and that motherfucker was in my house? My only means of defense is a baseball bat with a buck knife taped to the end of it. A scalpel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is basically a a new jack weapon. Yeah. Yeah, six fucking days this guy's been going. That's crazy. I would shit and then cover myself in the shit and then run downstairs screaming. <laughs> What's in my fucking house? <laughs> like, oh, this guy's crazy. <clears throat> hey, you want to dance? <laughs> Jake, what's new with you, buddy? You got uh, any birthday plans? This is it. Yeah. Birth- oh. Yeah. I I took a nice nap from uh, all day. <laughs> and uh, I'm here. Did you have a nice birthday meal? Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had tacos. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Can't Can't complain. You know? I can't time. believe you're wearing that shirt. Yeah, my wife hates it. I love it. She's like, you know, <laughs> they had a shirt that it. said, I love my wife. And I'm like, oh, they did? I, I didn't <laughs> yeah, see that that's one. That's what I thought it said. Yeah, so I got to go back and get that one now. I thought you had a smudge on your glasses. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't see through these dirty glasses that I wear. Where did you buy the shirt? Right next Pizza to the Hut? old-timey photo in Rehoboth. Okay, yeah, yeah, one of the classic. Yeah. Did they have that right in the window display? Oh, yeah, I walked by, like, six stores, and every right, time... Right above the... Uh, every time I see it, I chuckle. And I was like, you know what? Today's the day. Federal butt inspector sh- uh, shirt. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's who's on the case uh, trying to track down the murderer. They call, they the, call wrong the wrong ones, yeah. <laughs> well, the good news is there's a lot of great cheeks in this neighborhood. <laughs> Has a full report. Mm, I love a full report on Very lady. full report. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, everybody, come see us in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. Tonight. Right? Uh, wait, yeah, Friday night. Yeah, we'll you'll be get there. this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, patrons will get this. Patrons. We're going to be Cleveland September 8th. We're cruising in the town. Yeah, you only got a couple hours to drive there at this point, so please. For the love of God. If you live yeah. within 1,000 miles of Cleveland. Booze in the blend. <laughs> we live within 1,000 miles of Cleveland. <laughs> we do, and we're going. Yeah, That's why we're going. What? You're right. You're right. I'm so excited to fly again. I'm excited to fly back, but unfortunately, I will be flying Frontier there, so I'm filled with anxiety up until they let me on the plane with my backpack. Oh, bro, it's like an hour and a half flight. You'll be good. I know. Oh, uh, you're just worried about getting your shit on? Yeah, I have a bag that fits their parameters, but you know they'd be fucking on every motherfucker in there. I had an idea about that. <laughs> I had so it says like tote bag versus uh, they call it a fucking book bag a per, like a carry on. Get the fuck out of here! That's a personal item if you're a guy. I'm yeah. with you. That's bullshit. But I'm gonna put another bag in the tote bag at the bottom. So then, I, like, I on don't the know. way home, you have more. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm doing yeah. the same thing, buddy. Yeah. So I, a lot of room for souvenirs. You know, you know what I would say if I were you, Jake? I would just be like, y'all going to see me carry the fuck on if you don't stop busting my balls about this damn carry-on. <laughs> yeah, try that at Frontier. They will beat the it. fuck out of you, dude. <laughs> yeah. oh, man. Frontier and Spirit are not to be fucked with. Yeah. yeah you will. They will send you into a spirit. <laughs> That's what I call it, Spirit. What? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just run out of words sometimes, you know? You ever get that feeling? Yeah. Yeah, around the hour and a half mark every podcast. <laughs> Damn, y'all. John, what's new with you, buddy? Not much. Gonna gonna get my shit together. Got a camping trip to start packing for. Congratulations. Nice. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll see you on the tail end of it. What does that mean? I'm flying to Reno and camping my way to Vegas. Okay. So when I see you, I will be stinky <laughs> and I'll need to do laundry. Oh, um, doing laundry on vacation. Look at that. How after odd. I went camping. Not sh- <laughs> But what's the difference between camping uh, and, and shitting, shitting your pants? Your pants? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, honestly, there isn't much of a difference. <laughs> <laughs> when you're camping with me, who can tell the difference? <laughs> you ain't right. You, you use leaves to wipe when you're out there, or do you, use, you bring your own toilet paper? If you're backpacking, you bring your own toilet paper. Okay. Bring a little wag bag to put your toilet paper in. Do you usually stay at places that have the little bathroom close by? Uh, yeah, a campground usually does, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's just a little hole with a man out, attached house. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet's free, boy. <laughs> A little hole with a man attached to it. I like that. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> What's new with you? Things are good, man. Um, I can't wait to go away. I have, um, yeah, I desperately need a vacation. You about to get it? Yeah, I know. What What does that mean? I'm about to get vacation? Oh, okay, I'm about to vacation your fucking ass away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that, buddy. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna race some hell out there. We're gonna act up. You gonna do any gambling in Vegas? Uh, I don't know. Sports betting, think, maybe. Yeah, I will. I think the Phillies will be playing then, and the Eagles will be. Yeah, that's cool. So I'll probably do those too. And I had fun doing that last year. It lasts so much longer if you're gambling on fucking games. Yeah, you got. And if you're pumping it two into and a half hours. machine, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's much more fun. Yeah. I got. I'll. I'll be willing to lose two hundred bucks. That's my. Yeah, limit. Mm-hmm. this is gonna be a dangerous year because I downloaded FanDuel for the first time at the Super Bowl and. Season's about to start, and mm-hmm. I'm like, man. You got like, just a taste of last year. Maybe like $50 a week. Let's see. What I get. Jesus Christ. <laughs> now you're going to win. Yeah. Well, let's I struggle so. with those, Jake. Yeah? With ever winning. Oh. I think uh, one bet that I that I hit on last year was uh, MB to win MVP. I placed nice. it at the beginning of the year. I forgot about it. and uh, I had to pay pretty well, right? I didn't. I don't bet much. I think I won like eighty four bucks on like a ten dollar bet. That's it's good. Pretty good. It yeah, is yeah. good, but it's yeah. Would have been fucking nuts if you had bet a hundred. Obviously, I would, I would but never though, just because. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of money. Historically, I've just won. lost so often that it never pans out. Yeah. But yeah, that was nice. So yeah, I do I occasionally like a little gambling. I think I'm gonna play a little video blackjack. I'm too scared to play it with a real oh, dealer. I know yeah. it is intimidating. Yeah, I hate the video blackjack. Because I feel like it's rigged. Yes, it does not feel 
Like it's an honest trip aces. Chance. Yeah. You're like what? <laughs> yeah, you just gotta bet yeah. massive at the right time. I'm just gonna find a lady that I can shove pennies into. You know. I'm not sure if that's a I, casino game or no, a war. Old school it. Vegas. You can do that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's off the beaten path. Yeah, there's a lot of broken ladies there. It's on the beat off path. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, when I was there last year, I saw a lady. My wife and I were just walking back from breakfast. There was a lady who was either on crack or meth, hanging out of like her hotel room window, screaming at everybody walking past with oh her titties out. Whoa! Yeah, it was something. How them meth titties look? Not good, man. No, I got about a block away, and I wish I had yelled out Rapunzel, <laughs> Rapunzel. Let down your flapjack titties. <laughs> <laughs> she was already back inside, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully she's there again this year. Yeah. You think the shirt will fly in Vegas? I think that shirt's going to fly first class to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Go through TSA <laughs> wearing this. I can do it. That's a big bird. <laughs> Take everything out of your pocket, Mr. Mills. <laughs> Belts, shoes, keys, cellular items, Mr. Mills. <laughs> Give me that one. I'll bring my own. You can do that. When you walk through TSA, you can request your own wand. I think the last time I walked through TSA, um, they like, you know how like they pretend it's your responsibility to put the uh, tray back? Mm-hmm. And I don't do that. I don't think it's my job, and I don't think I should have to do that. Mm-hmm. So I get all my shit out of the thing, and I leave the tray on the rolly. And the last time I did it, a guy was uh, yelling at me, and I just didn't look back. An employee? Yes, a TSI guy. was like, yeah. hey, yo. As I'm continuing to walk, he's like, put your fucking, hey, dude, hey, you. And I just don't acknowledge him. And he's like, what's this fucking guy, deaf? <laughs> <laughs> and there's like a couple in front of me and they look back and I'm just smiling ear yes to ear. he is <laughs> <laughs> what did you <laughs> I thought about her turning around like you talking <laughs> you talking I hear vibrations <laughs> I heard every word you said I'm going to the to- I gotta work at the to store <laughs> he's wearing headphones <laughs> <laughs> I hope that motherfucker's working working on Friday. Yeah, they're the worst, man. I'm going to give him a piece of my ass. I almost don't want to curse him now, though. <laughs> you don't want to curse him I now? don't want to curse him now. I want all of our flights to go smoothly on Friday. Yeah. yeah. And then once we're uh, about a half hour outside of Philadelphia on Saturday, we'll just start screaming about the TSA on the plane. Yeah. Oh, dude. oh we got oral presentations on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys, are you working on yours? I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing one from six years ago. Mine is loosely related to the one I did last time. Good. Nice. How about you, Jake? I have no idea what I'm doing yet, but I'll figure it out. Have you ever put together a um, PowerPoint presentation? I have. So this should be a breeze. It's not. It no, doesn't matter how many times you do it. It sucks. It's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it always feels like you got to call somebody. Yeah. And Jake, you're my, uh, you're my tech call guy. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm here. I know how to do the animations, Mike. What's your favorite one? Swipe left. Mm. That's how I wipe. Whoa. How's this? How's this? This podcast is going way too long. How's this keister situated? Conventional wisdom says front to back. (laughs) Some people say back to front. I say right to left. You're not going to tell me what to do with my stuff. I am going to tell you to end the podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you guys for being patrons, man. You guys are the fucking best. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, y'all are the best. Yeah, if you're getting sloppy seconds from the patrons, I feel bad for y'all. You can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash stinkers. L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. Spell it for them now. <laughs> we do so much, yeah, we do so uh, much on that. Yeah, you get every episode a week early. You'll get an ex- extra episode each month. You'll yeah. get all the live AMAs we do. You'll get all the movie watch-alongs, all the book clubs we do. We're writing a letter to Jody Arias this month that is going to be comprised of all the words that patrons tell us to put in this fucking letter. Oh, my God. We're sending it from Jake's address. No, no, we're not. We are. So... 
and we're going to have uh, whatever else we can think of that might be fun. Yeah, we think of From something here to yeah. eternity, new every month that we try to Indeed. fucking yeah. test out, see if it works. It works. We'll do it again. Also, too, <laughs> patrons get all episodes ad free. Yeah. So if you're watching for free, you're going to get stuck with some ads. It's, it's only $4 a month. $40 for the year. That's one Grubhub meal. Guys, mm-hmm. just don't order Grubhub for one day, you fat sack of shit. <laughs> and just, no, Dude, I'm sorry. This you, has been you, such a tough episode for fat women watching this, man. I didn't say women. I didn't exclude. <laughs> did. I said sacks of shit. You went like this. <laughs> I, I did so the motion like that. Yeah. A sassy lady. Sorry, guys. But yeah, thank you to our patrons who make, uh, make all this shit possible. Thanks, y'all. Mm-hmm. We love you. Love you guys. See, See you next, next time. time. There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Well, Snickers.